a bit about me. I'm Mr. C, uh, and I founded the Hack Lab here in Cambridge, and we teach kids how to hack, how to make things with tech, uh, how to produce things in the 21st century, because we live in the 21st century. But we have an education system that comes from the 19th century. That's two whole centuries ago. These two quotes sum up my feelings about the education system today uh, pretty succinctly. Mark Twain, first of all, a very famous author, said that he never let school interfere with his education, uh, which I find to be quite apt. And the second one is from my favourite cartoon ever. Uh, it's called Rick and Morty. And the main character there says that school is not a place for smart people. And I think that that's becoming an issue in today's society because we're changing. Our society is innovating, but our education system is beleaguered. It's in trouble. Teachers are working very, very hard to try and do the things they're being asked to do, but the things they're being asked to do don't fit what we need for tomorrow. This was written at the time of the workhouses, Oliver Twist's time, 19th century, and this is when formalised education began. It started off in the workhouses. It was a way to educate all of the children in the workhouse efficiently, quickly, so that they could do what we needed them to do, which was work in factories, add up their paycheck, calculate their grocery bill, and go home. We didn't have to have innovators and creators at this time. We wanted people to fill our factories and do this work. So the things that we taught them, as you can see at the end of that quote, say that we were teaching them for servitude, not creativity. This is what the classroom looked like in a workhouse, and I'm sure most of us feel some sort of semblance to our own classrooms at school in that. Straight lines facing the front, listening to me talk at you. A bit like this. Slightly different in this though, because it was sit down, be quiet, do what you're told, on your own, and at the end, I will see how you have done. Ken Robinson, one of my personal heroes, asked the question, do schools kill creativity? He says we educate children by their date of manufacture. It's not about what you can do or how good you are at something, it's about when you were born, which seems backwards to start with. And you can see at the end here, our system is predicated on academic ability. If you were an alien and you thought the education system was for a purpose, then you would have to assume that purpose was making university professors, because according to the system, those are the people who have made it to the top. And that's not what we need. All of these companies, some of the biggest and most powerful entities in the corporate world, indeed the world at large, all of the founders of these companies never graduated from university, the founders of the two companies in the corner, Disney and Virgin, they left school at 16. School is not a place for smart people sometimes. Kevin Kelly, the first editor of Wired magazine, a futurist, a man who knows where society is heading when it comes to digital technology, said this on Freakonomics, that as soon as we had electricity, you would have telephones. That was inevitable. That technology was going to happen. We would work out how to communicate with electronics but it took a special mind to invent an iPhone. It took a special mind to produce that design and the concept, the marketing. These are all unique skills that robots can't do. These are the things we should be teaching our people to be able to do because the workhouse is gone. It's being replaced with automation. This was the centre, this was the heart and the soul of home entertainment in the 1800s, the piano. The amount of effort it required to entertain people on the piano was immense. Not only did somebody have to build this instrument, which is a hugely skillful job, but somebody else had to go and learn how to play the piano over many years of painstaking lessons. And then you had to get all your friends around, you'd take turns singing along, playing the piano. The piano was the number one thing sold in houses in the 19th century. As soon as 1915 rolled around, it was the phonograph. It had eclipsed sales of the piano by over 5,000%. Everyone had a phonograph because you could get music from anywhere in the world in your house. You could have an opera singer that you loved playing in your lounge room for all of your friends. And then when you got sick of that, you could put somebody else on. The piano industry was destroyed. But today, in radio broadcasting alone, there are more than half a million people in the US working. This is what we call creative destruction. When the old system is pulled apart for something new, it creates new opportunities. And these are the things we need to be teaching our young people to seize. This is a terrifying study. Uh, Ken Robinson again quotes it, I love showing this to teachers because they'll say, yep, I totally see that. This study was done in the early 90s. It's called Breakpoint and Beyond, and you can see here that when they tested these children at four, 
and they gave them a test that said, how many uses can you come up with for a brick, say? And grown-ups will say, well, you can build a house with it, or I can use it to hold down pieces of paper. Children will say, I can stand on it to reach things I can't get. Okay, I could whack somebody with it. <laughs> valid answer. That is a va you could do that with a brick. I don't advise it, but you could definitely do that with it. It's a correct answer. 98% of four-year-olds tested at a genius level for creativity. They tested the same children again at age 10, 32%. They tested the same children again, 8%. They tested 280,000 adults, that's us. Less than 2% of us tested at the same level for creative genius. We've had it educated out of us because the system we have doesn't want us to do that. It's not built, it's not designed to produce people that do that thing. It's a big issue that we're facing. So how do we change things? What can we do? Automation is coming. Bill Gates is already talking about giving robots income tax. Sounds like a silly idea, but when you consider that if you're replacing a factory worker in, say, a car factory in the Midlands with a robot, that person who's now displaced from work used to pay income tax and national insurance. All of those things are now not going to the state. They're going to the company who's saving the money on your wage. The problem we have there is that companies are lining their own pockets at the expense of ours and our lifestyle. So Bill Gates is calling for a tax, an income tax on robots, which makes sense. But what does that do for our workers when we can displace them and we can even claim the tax back on them? We teach our kids 21st century skills. And these are things that have been agreed upon amongst, um, amongst a bunch of educators around the world. These four things are the things that we need to teach children that are the things that will take us forward. Because we have computers to do our adding up. We have forklifts to do our heavy lifting. We don't need you to do those things anymore. How do we teach these things in the classroom? With these. There's a whole bunch of things that we can talk about with video games that are positive. At the moment, they have a really bad rap. But the things that I'm about to talk to you about can change the face of education if we let them, if we can get the corporations that need these workers to fund this idea. Because right now the government can't afford it, schools are already pressed for time, pressed for energy, all those sorts of things. Corporations are asking for workers that can do these things, then why are they not investing in that future? So using video games in the classroom addresses a number of things. First of all, assessment. The assessment that we have, the standardised test, we saw thousands of parents pull their children out of school on the days that SATs were mandated last year. They didn't want their kids sitting in these standardised box ticking tests that put them in a pigeonhole and says, this is how we feel you are doing. Video games don't have that. They don't have a, do you know the answer, as opposed to, can you solve this problem? Those are fundamentally different things to ask a kid. This one sets you up on a loop for failure if you get it wrong. This one allows you to be creative and have a hundred goes at trying to fix this thing before you get it right, and that's what we should be thinking about. That's genius. It's not Eureka, I've found the answer. Science is progressed by people saying, hang on a minute, that's weird, and looking into that problem, coming up with solutions, understanding how things work. Nobody comes to the answer the first time, nobody. And if they do, they cheated. Or they borrowed from somebody else. At the moment, our system sets up a fear of failure in children. You walk into a course or an exam and you feel like you have 100% when you walk through that door. The only way to go from there is down. You get a wrong answer, you lose marks. Another wrong answer, lose marks. It's a negative cycle and it teaches our kids to fear having a go at stuff and to be okay with getting it wrong. Video games don't do that. They give you a thousand opportunities to try and get it right. We've all played Super Mario. We all know how good it feels to get every coin in that level. What if we could apply this to school? What if we could apply that idea, the thing that makes us come back to Super Mario over and over, over again? What if we could apply that to school and get our kids coming back over and over again? We could also add things into our classroom like bonuses, okay? They would provide things like agency, because agency is the ability to make choices about your own life. Do you have the power over your own life? The education system today doesn't really allow kids that power to choose what they want to learn, where they would like to study. They have set boxes that you need to tick in order to get to a certain place. What if we could give kids the agency to say, all of your choices make a difference? Everything you do in your life, don't have that candy bar today for lunch. 
because if you do that a thousand times, you're degrading your health. We see this in video games all the time. There's a very short cycle of iteration. You see your mistakes quickly and you get another go. We can apply that to schoolwork. One of my favourite examples of that is Super Meat Boy. This game, it sounds very silly, but it is genius. If you haven't played it, have a go. It is a masterwork of game design. It is the simplest game you can conceive of, and yet it is the most addictive and fun thing ever. It's like Super Mario on nitrous. It's insane. Okay, I'm going to show you a video of some of the play. So this was me playing the other night. And watch how this game teaches you about your mistakes. Because as you see, you'll see every opportunity I took in the game at the beginning. And as I get it wrong, they will peter down until the one guy who wins. So you can see all my meat boys. And as they start to get it wrong, they fade out. More of them die and getting squished. And you can see I start iterating my mistakes as we get more and more through the level until I'm down to two. The first guy blazes through the problem and dies, and then I choose to wait. Because even in video games, choosing to do nothing is an active choice. All of your choices matter in video games. That's agency. The idea that you can look at a problem and say, OK, let's try it again, with minimal consequence. Why are we not applying this to schoolwork? Why are we giving kids this terrified nature of getting things right all the time? Edward de Bono, lateral thinking genius, the guy who came up with the six hats uh, coined the term lateral thinking, gave us this quote. Children are way more creative than us because they haven't been told this is the answer, this is the way you do stuff. They come up with it on the fly. They try things, and if it gets wrong, then, okay, let's do it differently, no problem. We don't have that. And I'm pretty sure all of us can relate to that feeling, that fear of failure, of getting the wrong answer, of putting your hand up in a meeting and saying something that is wrong or somebody else has already said. That's crazy. That is not how we innovate. That's not how we move forward. Games also provide responsive learning. Now, that's a teachery buzzword. And what it really means is that it allows me to find my students and get to their problem quickly, to provide a solution or some scaffolding that will support them to move forward in the things that they are doing. Video games provide this all the time. We can even change the difficulty level of video games to make things easier for our kids if they're not succeeding all the time. We can give them that success and make them feel good about what they are doing. If we have an education system that starts at zero and only moves forward and you can go up levels like video games do to become a more powerful learner, a more powerful citizen, what are we going to start seeing in changes in mindset in our students? How are they going to start thinking about society as a whole? Extra credits. Another thing I'll recommend to you. Go and see extra credits. If you like video games, if you're interested in education, these guys are exceptional. And they say that video games will allow us to produce a system that will be responsive and dynamic, that it will be able to tailor to individual students' needs at the point of need. We can build collaboration, creativity, critical thinking into all of our teaching. Just by its very nature, it will be baked in. Video games are the way forward in education. And we need to start seeing people understanding that video games are not just a waste of time. It's not just an escapist act. We can harness the power of what makes video games incredibly addictive and powerful and put it to good use because we need to support our teachers, because these guys are drowning. They're having more and more things dumped on them all the time, and they can't succeed at doing it. Thank you. <laughs>